In a story published over the weekend, the New York Times reported former CNN President Jeff Zucker has persistently blasted the network's new chief, Chris Licht, who's overseen the embattled major news network as it continues to lose ratings and viewership. And apparently, he's also leaked information about the network's internal operations to the press. Last February, CNN pushed its former president, Jeff Zucker, out and replaced him with Chris Licht. The network determined Zucker failed to follow proper protocol in disclosing a relationship with a subordinate, which he did not. Zucker isn't the only former employee who seems to be zeroing in on Lick's plight at CNN. Brian Stelter, who recently exited the network, reposted a story published in The Atlantic tearing into Lick's struggling leadership. Last year, Atlantic writer Tim Alberta was granted access to CNN's operations and wrote the 15,000-word article dissecting the meltdowns behind the scenes. The Hill reported today that Lick addressed the Alberta piece, writing, quote, I know these past few days have been very hard for this group, and I fully recognize that this news cycle and my role in it overshadowed the incredible week of reporting that we just had, distracted from the work of every single journalist this at this organization. And for that, I am sorry. So apparently, you know, there was this call this morning um, where he told staffers that he didn't recognize himself in that 15,000 word piece that was published in The Atlantic on Friday. Uh, and, you know, it would be interesting to hear more reflection on why exactly that was, why he granted this reporter such access over the course of, uh, I think, a substantial amount of time. The Atlantic piece opens with him telling the reporter that he, quote, believes th the media has absolutely, I believe, learned its lesson with respect to covering Trump. The reporter acts with surprise. And as we reflect on how CNN has made certain choices with the CNN town hall, which I think has gotten flack from kind of both sides of the thing, what is he imagining the lesson learned actually is? He says in this, in the Atlantic piece, uh, I know that Trump is playing us, at least people in my organization, we've had discussions about this, we know we're getting played, so we're going to resist it. Did the CNN town hall seem to reflect if, even if that's not your politics, does that reflect an understanding of how to avoid getting played by Donald Trump? Yeah, clearly there have been personality changes at CNN. It, Don Lemon has exited. Brian Stelter has exited. He has changed literally who is working there in some cases. But the content and the commentary with respect to everything and with respect to Trump doesn't seem that different to me. Uh, I was watching over the weekend, the last few days, right, it was wall-to-wall -wall coverage of this document scandal, which I, 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 it's not that I think it's a nothing burger, but again, I think the focus on some procedural error Trump might have committed uh, is overshadowing bigger, like, foreign policy questions. Again, going for the, go, re relying on law enforcement people to say, yes, this is how Trump is going down. He will defeat, be defeated mm -hmm. in this very specific legal context. We'll get him on this, as if, like, that's the, the thing that's really important to the people of America mm -hmm. is the, oh, Trump didn't, you know, file, didn't remove the book from the filing cabinets the correct way. Again, I'm not trying to minimize the important whatever, but it, it's, it's that focus. Focusing on that is, is what CNN throughout the Trump presidency did, is focused on things like that. So, and maybe that's fine. Maybe that's what the viewers want, but it's not different. Yeah. I don't know that he's changed the, uh, again, the, the editorial direction of what the talent thinks, which would be very hard to do. Like, can you imagine stepping in and s telling Anderson Cooper and Jake Tapper and everyone else that, like, you will substantively, substantively change the way you practice journalism? I, I can't imagine well, him pulling I, that off. <laughs> I don't, I can't imagine effectively causing them to do that heel turn because it's not authentically who they are. Right. But I can't imagine saying, here are the different kinds of guests you need to start having on your show and engaging in debates and having your views challenged by folks whose views more closely mm -hmm. aligned with what our audience actually thinks. They haven't done that. Right. And, and I do think, look, over on the right, I think that establishment networks are establishment networks and they largely talk about issues that are right. not germane to the public's interest. There's very little talk about poverty, real wages, um, housing crisis, et cetera, at least not from a lens that's approachable as opposed to um, you know, the, the New York yeah. Times insert reporting on uh, how to shop for houses in the Hamptons or whatever. However, um, on the right, you do get a narrative that says things like, 
we want to end the war in Ukraine. Look how, how much we're spending there versus the lack of domestic spending at home. Now, are Republican electeds interested in actually using that money on domestic spending? No, their record in Congress and their efforts at cutting domestic spending in the uh, debt ceiling negotiations indicates otherwise. However, they are still engaging in that kind of narrative that I think galvanizes audiences more than talking about the kind of procedural and legal rigmarole that's going around with Donald Trump. So it, it, to me, there is a clear path. The question is, are they ever willing to take that kind of populist opening because of conflicts with advertisers or their genuine mm -hmm. ethics and politics that are very establishment? Right. And there's this mistake of thinking, well, we ought to just be more neutral with respect yeah. to Republicans and with respect to Trump. And But I don't, it's not like America is full of people who are neutral, right? Yeah. America is full of people with some strong convictions. These convictions don't always fall so neatly onto a right-left spectrum. And some of these convictions, some, some people self-identify as Republicans, but have some convictions on economic issues, like you like to point out, that are, are actually Democrat or even further to the left than that. And some people who identify as Democrat, act, when you talk to them, actually have convictions on social issues or something that are to the right of, of what their Democratic representatives on cable news would have to think about things. So it's not, it's not necessarily that, like, greater neutrality, but just be, being more in touch with what, with what the viewers you want to cultivate actually think. Now, maybe these networks only have viewers who are, you know, the highly educated liberal elites who want exactly what they're giving, in which case, I don't know, why rock the boat? Why, why well, change what's, things what's, up? What's interesting, if you read um, Batyan Sargon's book, Bad News, she has some analysis about the class composition of various TV audiences. And while people draw some conclusions about um, left-leaning audiences being more elite, what the overall picture is is that it's all relatively more affluent people that are consuming right. all of these products. I mean, the con con more conservative-leaning Wall Street Journal, Financial Times, okay, those are very affluent people who are reading those as well as people who are watching CNN and MSNBC. So, I mean, there is this question about whether or not the appetite that more working-class people who are listening to Joe Rogan and alternative media ever are going to be interested in what's happening on, on the television. But she also makes this other interesting point. I saw her uh, the other day. Uh, on, I think, Fox saying, in response to the idea of Jamie Dimon running for president, the CEO of J.P. Morgan, saying, you know what, he thinks, so many liberals think, so many mainstream establishment figures think that what we really need is an economically, um, like, a, like a socially liberal, economically, con economically conservative person to run. That's what they think. Like me. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you and you. I'd Jamie be the only Dimon. person voting for that. <laughs> but well, I'm the, not gonna, no, I'm not going to vote for someone. That's, that's the liberal Jeffrey Epstein liberal entangled. Uh... I mean, liberals have been doing neoliberalism hand and fist with mm -hmm. Republicans, cutting the social safety net, pursuing conservative economic policy, passing NAFTA, shipping jobs overseas. That has been a bipartisan effort. Bipartisanship is a word that everyone should be afraid of the United States of America. And that is their solution to every problem. But Batia's point is that what there's a real appetite for, like it or not, is economic populism, with a, which, again, no party is uh, offering. It's what made Bernie Sanders so popular as a candidate, combined with a either Social, con more of a social conservatism, or I would more frame it as social normalcy, like a normy attitude towards mm -hmm. social issues, where it's not necessarily that everybody is enthusiastic about the pink haired Oberlin kid doing X, Y, and Z, but that is not the focus of politics. And there has been an effort by both parties historically to make social issues the focus of po politics because neither party wants to do economic populism. And so is that candidate gonna emerge? Is that someone like RFK Jr.? And are the mainstream news organizations gonna realize they have to appeal not to this imaginary person in their head, but to a very real Obama, to Trump, to Bernie, to RFK voter? Mm -hmm. That's what they have to reckon with. If I, what I, if I was Chris Licht, what I'd be wondering is, are the only people who are ever going to, the people who watch my show are pink-haired Oberlin grads, and that's the only people who are going to watch my network. So then why would, so then even deviating from that would just make things worse. I even though there's not a, it's not a huge audience for that. But like you said, like who is, who is going to come to CNN? Who's going to come to MSNBC for the first time? They should be throwing money. I don't know. The way that some of these conservative um, shows are throwing money at, is Tucker Carlson going to come? Is Steven Crowder going to come? Mm -hmm. Like trying to attract this kind of talent. If I were Chris Licht, 
I know people are going to roll their eyes at this, but I'd be trying to say, can I get Jimmy Dore to do regular segments? Can I get Russell Brand to do regular segments? Can I get Glenn Greenwald to come on and do regular segments or have a show? Because that is where the energy is. And those yeah. people are popular because they have figured out how to channel that anti-establishment angst, which is absolutely absent from any of these mainstream cable news shows. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree with that. More rising in just a minute.